In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to find the basis for the row and column space of a matrix. The question reads, find a basis for the row space and column space of the matrix below. Now before we begin tackling this problem, I need to go through an important theorem. And this theorem will help you understand what we're doing. If a matrix, let's say R, and here we have matrix R, is in row echelon form, as you can see ours is already in row echelon form, then the row vectors with the leading ones forms a basis for the row space of R. And the column vectors that contain the leading ones of the row vectors form a basis for the column space of that matrix. So let's start with the easy part. Once we have this in row echelon form, which it's already in, we can say that the basis for the row space are the following rows. 1, 2, 3, 0, and 1. Also, 0, 0, 1, 3, and 2. 0, 0, 0, 1, and 2. And lastly, the last row that also had that leading 1. So this represents the basis for the row space. When it comes to finding the basis for the column space, you have to look at the original matrix and write down the columns where you have leading ones. So the basis for the column space, I'll dedicate that part right here, is 1, 0, 0, and 0. That's one of them. Also, 3, 1, 0, and 0. We're talking about this column, that column. We also have that here, 0, 3, 1, and 0. And lastly, 1, 2, 2, and 1. Let's try to do this for question two. Find a basis for the row space and column space of the matrix below. Unfortunately, this is not in row echelon form. I'm going to assume that you already know how to put a matrix in row echelon form. And if you don't, make sure that you watch one of our earlier tutorials on how we do that. So if you put this in row echelon form correctly, your matrix should look like this. And of course, you can confirm this with a calculator or whatever means that you want. Once you have it in row echelon form, we can now find the basis for our row space. We'll have one here, here, and here. We'll write these down. They should look like this. So the basis of the row space are these. Awesome. Now just as before, if we want to find the basis of the column space, we have to look at the columns where there was a row that had a leading one. Take a look. This row had a leading one, so we record the elements in this column vector. 1, 2, 1, 2. This row also had a leading one, so we'll record these numbers. 2, 3, 2, 3. We also had a leading one right here, and that corresponds to column 4. So 0, negative 1, 1, and negative 4. And that right there represents the basis of the column space. And there you have it, two examples on how to find a basis for the row and column space of a matrix.